now switching into that transient study. So this is with respect to real time. This is like if we flip the flow switch on and it starts flowing the water through there and it immediately starts throwing that 50 mile an hour wind load at it. With that, we can do this, what it's called the transient explorer. Switching gears here into uh, my next topic, I'm gonna sit, talk about the uh, another thermal example with a heat transfer problem, a two-phase heat exchanger. So that two-phase means that we've got two domains. We've got an internal water flow uh, that's kind of running between these plates and uh, cooling off those plates. And then we're also considering the air around the structure, whereas with that, that electronics enclosure, we were just considering the uh, the, the air inside the structure. So now we're also considering the air around the structure. And we're, we're going to throw some ambient conditions at it to do some forced convection on those, on the, in that ambient air. So what we want to do here is just determine the cooling performance. And in my run through this morning, I didn't have enough time to go through this what if analysis, but uh, we'll see it on a different example where we're able to change the ambient conditions and understand the effects of different flow rates on the cooling effect. So that what if analysis is really great for situations where uh, you're, you're wanting to uh, like track trends, like what, like, yeah, answer the question. What if I change the flow rate? What if I have more force convection? If I have, if I put a stronger wind load or a stronger breeze on this. So this example is pretty simple here. It's a pretty easy example to, to illustrate what I'm trying to show here. But inside of here in our uh, input data, we come in and see that I have defined two different fluids. So I'm considering air and water. And I, I've also in my general settings defined some initial and ambient conditions. So I have a, velo a velocity of 50 miles an hour in the Z direction here. So along this blue axis. So that 50 miles an hour is going to be doing a lot of work for keeping this cool as well as the water flowing through the internal domain. And that internal domain is defined here with this fluid subdomain that we have to do this anytime we're considering two different domains. But we see here, it gives me a nice preview of that internal space. And I'm just gonna fill that with water. And then inside that domain, I have a, a flow rate at the inlet and I've just left it open to the environment at the outlet and say, let, your, let the water do your thing. And I've, I've run a steady state and a transient problem. So we'll look at both of those. We'll start out with the steady state. So the steady state is just going to show us the result once the flow field that has, has had enough time to fully develop. Um, also the, the temperature field uh, is gonna be at steady state as well. So this is a more efficient way if you're, you know, you're just trying to see when I've, I don't care about say like how long it takes to cool down or how long it takes that fluid field to develop. I just want to see, uh, yeah, that steady state solution. And it's much easier to solve. It's a fa much faster solve to do a steady state. So you don't have to do transient um, if you're not willing to commit the, the computer resources to it. But what happens here, we, we can see at this steady state solution, we have a pretty, you know, a very uniform temperature gradient through that, the, that water flow. And if we want to take a closer look at the external flow, you can see how that, that wind load, that 50 miles an hour in here is peeling that heat away from the, the copper pipe that has water running through it. And uh, eventually uh, ends up settling out and coming out around. It's warming up the air up to about, yeah, like seven, like 10 degrees up to like 77 in that light blue area. So that's the steady state solution. Um, some quick other result plots we can look at. So here's a surface plot looking at conduction, heat due to conduction. We can see that, of course, we're hot on the inlet and a little bit cooler at the outlet. Not a whole lot. By the time it reaches steady state, it's doing a cooling cooling effect is pulling it down by maybe like five degrees Fahrenheit or so. We can see that way through that surface plot. Um, we can also, yeah, say like a surface parameter, say we defined a a flow rate at the inlet, but what's the pressure there if we're building up too much pressure? Uh, we, we can see that as a surface parameter right here. Another really neat output for thermal problems is this flux plot, where we can see what's what's happening thermally, how, like, how much heat is transferring from one body to another, for example. So between this, uh, the, sh the shell body, it's labeled as is the copper pipe. 
how much heat from the, that pipe is going into each one of these plates here at different locations, perhaps. And then how much is it losing to the default domain? So we can see um, that <laughs> that pipe is losing 143 watts just out to the default, that just that air fluid subdomain. So that's telling us that's uh, just due to convection from that 50 mile an hour wind load. Most of the cooling effect is coming from that, not so much uh, being lost through the through the plates like this. So yeah, yeah, and of course the ones that are more oriented towards the front are going to have a little bit more heat transfer happening, just over 13 watts. Whereas when we get to the other side, uh, taking it's only taking about uh, yeah about 12.7 watts from the pipe into that plate. And then, yeah, in the middle, it's about 12.9. So just a nice way to track trends. And again, just another way to understand the overall effect of all of these. You can imagine um, how, how, how much we can throw at this in more complicated problems where maybe there are a lot more bodies or a lot more uh, locations of interest. Uh, now switching into that transient study. So this is with respect to real time. This is like if we flip the flow switch on and it starts flowing the water through there and it immediately starts throwing that uh, 50 mile an hour wind load at it. With that, we can do this, what it's called the transient explorer, where now if I show those same two plots we were looking at before, we can see with real time how it's finding that steady state flow field and you know, kind of answer the question of how long does it take to reach that steady state. So with, with this, it gives me a video bar that I can kind of scrub through and find that sweet spot of how long did it take for that, that fluid field to fully develop? Yeah, maybe about seven seconds or so. We can see now we've got stuff coming out of the outlet that's at that steady state temperature. So that's telling us that, that that's how long it took. So that's one way we can look at that type of thing in a transient study with that transient explorer with the video bar that we can scrub through. There's also these goal plots as well. So remember, this is like this can be like our convergence criteria but it's also good for tracking trends. So if I come in and look at it, at the, those goals with respect to, uh, with respect to time, now we can see how long did it take for the, yeah, the, the solid temperature. So uh, on the solid bodies, that surface plot we are looking at, how long did it take for that to reach steady state? And yeah, looking at this, I mean, it only took a couple of seconds for that conduction to fully settle out. And after that, it's just a straight line after that. But here's where we can see some of that cooling effect is the, um, the surface goal is at the outlet. So it's just telling me um, on that surface, what's the, what's the maximum temperature at, at that location? What is the temperature at the outlet? So we can see right away, it, it does some cooling effect uh, for yeah maybe, maybe a, a second <laughs> or so. Um, and then eventually it just ends up warming back up and eventually finding that steady state solution. So maybe that's telling us that the flow rate is too fast or um, we need to uh, be, be um, at the inlet, we need to be introducing maybe cooler water, something like that, uh, rather than just that the ambient, that kind of thing. Uh, we can start to understand those trends as well with a, with a transient study. How long did it take to warm up? Those kinds of questions.